Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope you guys are doing great today. This is Virillo Trading from YouTube and I want to make a video right now talking about this platform again, Trader Workstation by Interactive Brokers. So in this video, I wanted to actually talk to you about what I think is the easiest and simplest way to execute orders in this platform that will give you the least amount of headaches and know exactly what you're looking at at all times. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to focus on. If you enjoy this type of content, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get to it right now. Okay. So if you're new to trading, if you've never done any of this before and you open this platform, this is the first thing you're going to see. And probably your reaction is going to be something like, well, what is this and how do I use it to make money? I have no idea what I'm looking at. And is what I'm looking at even useful? Actually, you won't ask that last question. You're automatically going to think you're supposed to use this information to make trading decisions. I will tell you right here from the experience that this screen right here is not very useful. In fact, it is a lot of noise all in the same screen and it's not a very good use of screen real estate at all. Okay, you can see a lot of different windows here and I can spend time telling you what each of these windows does. But in this video, I want to actually show you a simpler, more effective way to look at the markets using this platform trader workstation. First, I need to tell you that this platform TWS is very simplistic and in my opinion does not offer the tools that day traders need to get an edge in the markets today. Okay, this platform does not give you those tools. I personally use third party platforms to see those order flow analytics. I use Sierra charts and jigsaw end of story. Now that being said, interactive brokers, it's in the name broker, they are a broker and they are a very good broker for certain things. They're still a good broker because they're one of the brokers that provides the lowest cost trading in the US equities market to international clients. That's why they're still one of the best brokers. So again, they're a very good broker, their trading platform, very simplistic. So I'm telling you openly that they do not have the tools necessary to get the edge as a day trader. Just my opinion. Obviously, guys, everything of what I'm saying in this video, none of it is advice for trading. When you interact with the markets, when you engage in these markets, you need to understand the risk you are putting on at all times. And none of what I'm saying in this video is any recommendation to place trades or put on risk at all. I'm simply showing you what I think is an effective way to do that. Done. Okay, so what you're seeing here on this screen, okay, is a couple of windows, but really the most important one is this one. Okay, this is a quote monitor. Okay, so back in the day, if you look at old photos of these guys uh, standing on the floor of the exchange and they're looking up at a screen, what are they looking at? They're looking at a quote screen showing the data of each of these instruments. This is an example of a quote board and you can put whatever instrument you want on this quote board. This quote board right here is the simplest and most intuitive way to not only look at the markets, but also place and manage your orders and see your open positions. Okay, so guys, so I'll just do a simple demonstration of this quote board, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and why I think it's the simplest way to execute orders for stocks, options, futures, or whatever. So let's say you have a stock in mind. I'm going to click on any open space here and I'm gonna type in the name of the ticker and then it will appear here and you can choose between the stock options or whatnot. So I'll just choose a stock and then you can see the ticker now appears here. I can see all of the quote data. So the data displayed in these columns, you can customize that data as you like it. So these are the columns that I've put in currently, but if you need to change them, all you do is simply right click on the columns. Then you go to customize the layout. Now, when you're in this window, you're going to see here a lot of different drop down menus of data you can display in this quote monitor. You can explore that yourself. All you really need to do is you bring down the drop down menu and then click on whichever data you need and then add it to the quote monitor and then hit OK and that should be fine. OK, so the next thing is I just wanted to show you briefly how you would use this to trade options. Very simple. So you take an option chain like this. Let's say you know already which option you need. 315 call option on the triple Qs. What you do is you drag the option that you want into your quote board like that. And now you will see it is populated in your quote board. You can see all of the information for that option. So it doesn't matter how many options you trade, you can bring them in. The next thing is, let's say you needed to bring in an option strategy. What you would do first in your options chain is you click on the strategy builder, you turn it on, then you create the strategy. So let's say I wanted to do a vertical spread where I sold this put option and I bought a lower put option. 
Now you can see that the strategy is being displayed here. You can see the price of that strategy and the margin impact and all of the Greeks. Let's say that is the one you want. You now just click on this button, add to watch list, and it's going to be added to your watch list. Okay, so now if I go to my watch list, you'll see that it's been added to the quote board here. 310 slash 307 put spread. You just hover your mouse over it and it will show you exactly what that spread is. So you can see how I've easily inputted single options contract as well as option spreads into this quote board. The next step is executing orders, which is very easy. You can do it in a number of ways. The first and simplest way is by right clicking on the instrument and then clicking buy or sell. If you click buy or sell, what it will do is it will prompt a buy or sell order based on the order preset you have configured in your global configurations under presets. So if you configured a preset that says your default size is 100 shares, it's gonna prompt an order for 100 shares and the order type you've selected. Just to repeat what I just said, the first and simplest way would be to right click on the instrument and then click buy or sell and then fix the order as you need it, how many contracts, the limit price of your order, etc. and then you transmit it that way. So the next way, and I would say a much faster way to input orders in this quote cool board is to program a couple of buttons. So let's say I program a button that prompts a buy market order, in this case, that's exactly what it did. And now I will press another button to transmit that order. Let's say that order was working and it filled. Now on the right side of the screen here, I would be able to see my position, which in that case would be positive one contract. If I bought one contract, I would be able to see my average price on the position. This average price is including your commission cost as well. And of course your realized PL, which is an approximation of your realized PL on the day and that includes unrealized profit as well. Okay, so now that you understand how this window works, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step process on how to get this window on your screen and how to set it up the way you like it. So let's get started here. If you enjoy this content, leave a like, let's go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is show you exactly how to replicate this or something very similar to it. So the first thing we need to do is go to the bottom of the window, click on the plus icon. Now we want to create a new layout, let's do a new layout called YouTube create. So now we have an open layout. So we need to input a new window. So we'll start here in the top left corner, new window. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom to more advanced tools. In this menu, we will now go to quote monitor. That is the window that I'm talking about that shows you all of the quotes, allows you to place orders and see your open positions and profits all in the same window. In order to create a quote monitor, you just need to give it a name. So let's name it YouTube. Um, order reference does not really matter. Layout, you can use a custom layout that you've created in the past or just set it to default. For example, if you had a layout that you already created and you wanted to replicate exactly that one, you should find your layout here and then select that one. Another interesting thing is that you can configure order presets that apply only to this quote monitor if you needed that. All this other stuff, you don't need to worry about that. Just click on okay. So now we have a quote monitor. What we wanna do now is drag it to fill up the size of our window, okay? We can fill up the whole thing if you want. So let's say we filled up half the screen with the quote monitor, okay? Once you're satisfied with that, you lock it. Now that you have this quote monitor here, you need to pay attention to the information on the columns. They may or may not be the information that you need. The way you change these values, I'll tell you again, is you right click on any column and then you go to customize layout. Now let's say for example, I did not want some of these. What I would go in and do is I would click on the one I don't want and I would say remove. And then I would hit apply and those columns will now be disappeared from the quote monitor. You might be saying, well, there's an open space on the top of your screen. What can you put there? Well, it's up to you at that point. You can place whatever you want here. Let's say, for example, we placed a trade window here just to show our executed trades. And then next to that window, I'm going to put some sort of a news feed here. So now we have something that looks half decent. The point of this is to keep it as simple as possible. You might be asking, where are your charts? Well, I will tell you right away. My opinion is that if you want good charts, you should use a third party application. You can try Sierra charts, excellent charts. You can try trading view. Think of IB as a broker. That's what they do best. Use them as a broker and that's the end of the story. Okay. So now we have our quote board. I'll type in a ticker. I'll type in ES, which is the symbol for S&P 500 futures. And I'll go over here to E-mini S&P 500 Globex. 
futures. I'll go to the continuous contract. Now I have the quote for the S&P futures on my board. If I wanted to buy it, I could either right click on it, buy or sell, or I could use a configured button to do so. Now, we'll just talk briefly about configured buttons. I know I have a bunch of videos on hotkeys already, but in case you didn't know, I'll just show you very briefly. So we will go now to file global configuration and go to hotkeys top left of the screen. And every hotkey you configure here in this window will apply to this quote monitor you've created. So let's say, for example, you wanted to create a couple of buttons. One of them is to prompt a buy limit order at the bid, and the other one would be to prompt a sell limit order at the ask. And maybe you would also want to configure a sell stop or a buy stop to protect your position. Of course, there's a lot of different things you can do, which you would do to make this nice and simple is you would go to the top of the window here. This is where the functions appear. So let's say you want to create a buy function, you click on buy, you go to create shortcut. All right, customize now order type, make it a limit order size, leave it on default, because that's going to default to whatever size you have in your order presets, limit price, make it the bid. And essentially, that is it. I just wanted to make a hotkey for that shift B, for example. So now I have a hotkey that says buy limit at the bid fine. So just for the sake of this, I'll also make an equivalent hotkey that will sell limit on an offer. So I'll do shift S for that customize. And then I will do order type limit at the ask. And that is it. I'll say okay, apply. And now I have two hotkeys there I've configured. So now when I click on my selected ticker here, and I do shift B, it will prompt a buy order. Now that the market is closed, it's bringing up this order ticket menu. But when the market is open, it will not bring up this order ticket. So if I do it on another stock to submit an order on this ticker right here, I click on the ticker to start. Then I press my button shift B and it will prompt a buy order limit at the best bidding price. Now, of course, if you wanted to change the order type, you can do it simply by clicking on the order itself. So now this is important for traders that execute orders outside of real time hours. You will right click on the time and force and check these boxes here, which are fill outside of real time hours and allow pre open meaning allow pre market trading. And of course, those things can be checked by default. Just do them in the order presets menu file global configuration, you go to presets, then whichever product you're trading, say stocks, and then these two check boxes right here, allow order to be activated or filled outside of regular trading hours, and allow order to be routed and executed during the pre open session, you check one of these boxes. And then every time you prompt an order, it will automatically be ready to do that. Guys, that's the basic concept. I just wanted to show you what I think is the simplest and most effective way to execute orders in this platform and get away from this sort of complicated way of looking at it. I would say use a quote monitor. Again, guys, this is just my opinion. But I do believe that this is one of the simplest ways to execute orders for stocks and derivative contracts in this platform. So I would say try it. Like I told you, I do use third party applications to look at order flow analytics, because IB's platform does not provide that data. They're useless in that regard, but they're very useful as a broker for options. Just before we end the video, I just wanted to talk about one myth that a lot of new traders have about options. So they think that when you're trading an option, you need to see the chart for the option you're trading. Um, I would say that's pretty false. Like you could argue that it's useful. But at the end of the day, if you're trading an option, you have to know that it's a derivative contract of an underlying. So when you're calculating the value of an option contract, you need to understand the math formulas that are used to calculate the values of these options based on the price movement of the underlying security. If you want to know more about that, I would recommend this book right here for traders getting into options and understanding the formulas required for calculating option values based on directional movements of underlying. So guys, that's the end of the story. You don't really need to chart these options. You simply need to know the value. I'll give you a hypothetical example. Let's say I'm trading NQ NASDAQ futures. And for whatever reason, I wanted to put on a position on the triple Q's options, which is the same market, it's NASDAQ. So let's say I wanted to get long on a call, but I'm looking at the order flow on NQ. So basically, I'm going to use some formulas to calculate the approximate value of this contract, you know, 10, 20 points higher than the current price of NQ and 10, 20 points lower than the current price of NQ. And again, if you guys want to know more about that, I do have another video, I'll link it in the description below. Alright, guys, so this video was all about showing you what I think is probably the simplest way to view quotes and execute orders in the TWS platform. If you enjoyed the video, that's awesome. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.